Hi, today I want to talk to you about a new website I've just created where you can go and for free you can get access to a series of tools that will help you create custom designs for your laser cutter. I'll show you how to use the first tool I posted which is a living hinge designer and I'll talk to you a little bit about the second tool that's already there which is this uh, custom seasonal candle shade uh, designer and I'll be making a separate video about that soon. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And for nine years now, I have been making tutorials about how to design things for laser cutters and then actually cut them and, and, and assemble them. And I've always dedicated half of every one of my videos to the design process. And the reason why I've done that is because I really feel that as wonderful as laser cutters are and all the power they give us in terms of being able to make the kinds of things we could only imagine making just a few years ago, um, they're even more wonderful when you can design something custom for yourself, something totally unique. So I wanted to help people do that. But I've also learned that uh, while I am fortunate to have the time to be learning how to design and designing things, not everybody has that time. In fact, very few people have that time. And uh, that's why so many people would ask me for access to my files. And I actually tried to do that for a while because um, because I understood that time issue. But I just couldn't keep up with it because I'm a one-person shop. I do all the designs of the projects. I make them. I make all the videos. Uh, that was a separate website, and I just couldn't keep up with it. So I shut that back down a couple of years ago. But I've been thinking about this problem ever since. And I have came up with an idea just recently because I have a powerful new tool in my shop. And that tool is Claude AI. I've talked about Claude in, in videos, other videos this year, because in fact, Claude is who got me onto the idea of living hinges. If you don't know, living hinge is a technique where you cut a pattern in the wood and it makes the wood flexible. So this card box here has two living hinges in it. And I just think it's such a great technique. I used it for a bunch of different things that you see here on the table. And actually, Claude also helped me generate some of the ideas for the, these projects. This building right here, you can take apart and store flat. I actually store it in this box right here. And the reason why I can, that was Claude's idea, to, as this is an innovative use of the living hinges. And it works because it has these long hinges here in the roof that lets the roof lay flat. It has hinges in the corners of the building that allow you to lay the walls flat. Even the little doors here have living hinges. That's what uh, lets them open and close. And so this was a Claude idea. And uh, I he also helped me create a test suite to test different patterns of living hinges. I learned a lot about living hinges. But then um, I kept having to create different sizes of living hinges for all these projects. So I have very long, beefy living hinges here in this, in this box that lets these big flats, flaps open and close. Then I have little tiny hinges here in these bracelets. Um, you saw the hinges here in the card boxes. And my, my newest project, so new it's not out yet, but you'll learn more about at the end of this video, are these candle shades. And they are essentially giant living hinges with cutouts of seasonal motifs in them that let the, the candle light through. It was kind of tedious to have to keep designing all these different sizes of hinges, and I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could just have Claude generate the hinges for me? And I know that Claude is especially good at writing code, I know nothing about writing code, but, but um, I sat down a couple weeks ago and I said, I, I want to design an app with Claude. And he and I designed a living hinge app 
that lets you say how long and how wide you want it to be, and it will just generate that SVG for you, and you download it and use it. And in the case of a hinge, I would incorporate it into another design. Um, and I would know the size I needed based on having already thought through that design. You also have the ability in that living hinge designer, there's defaults for the length of the cuts and the spacing and everything. These all affect how flexible the hinge is. So if you really want to get in and kind of tweak the hinge, you can do it in this app but it has defaults that make it super easy. So if all you want to do is to say, I want it one inch wide and 10 inches long, it just generates that for you and you download it. So I posted that on my GitHub page. It's, I can access it anywhere through a browser and it was so fun to do. I said, well, let's see what else Claude can do. So the next project I had in mind were these candle shades right here. And they're essentially giant living hinges with these cutouts in them. And I worked together with Claude. By the way, these store flat as well, because um, in the back here is a, a connector that I learned how to make when I was making the building. And so uh, these can be stored flat as well, which is really helpful if you're doing seasonal uh, decorating. And uh, so I worked with Claude to create a, a candle shade designer that lets you state how tall is your candle based on the, the, the circumference of the candle, how long do you want it to be. It, uh, it lets you pick right now from six different seasonal motifs and it puts them in or you can get a blank version that you can just test the solid little squares there and you can download that and bring it into your drawing software and put in whatever motif you want. And uh, if you want something like the, the ones you see here, you just push the button, it generates the file, and you go and cut it. It's even got the little uh, connector device in the back on the drawing. So that's kind of the direction I want to head, is um, uh, I'll have some utilities like the Living Hinge Designer that help you design your own things. But I want to really move into these more project-oriented things where if you want to do a version of this box, you can just say uh, what dimensions you want and it'll generate it for you. So that's where I'm heading. And your role, a very important role that you can play for me is as my tester, because I can test on what I have. I know these things on work, work on Illustrator. I know that they um, work on the We Create Make It software and Lightburn. But I also know that these shades here um, are sophisticated enough that if you try to view this with just through a browser, like an Edge browser or the uh, Chrome browser, it'll look like the motifs aren't there because those, those browsers do not have a sophisticated enough SVG processor to see the nested coding that creates those little motifs. So I'll be creating a video for each one of these projects that I'll kind of tell you I'll show you using them today. In this video, I'll show you using the Living Hinge Designer. Where you find it, which is at graylightmay.com, that's the URL, and graylight is spelled G-R-E-Y-L-I-G-H-T-M-A-Y.com. Um, so I'll show you how simple it is to go there. You'll see the tools that are available. You click on the one you want to use. You make some choices and drop down menus and it will preview what you're asking for. And when you're happy with the preview, you push a button and download it. And um, I need to see if it works on the software you use. And if you run into problems, please let me know in the comments. And also, if you have ideas of the projects you want me to do in the future, I'd, I'd love feedback on that. I mean, I know that I want to do a very powerful card box designer that where you just say this is the size cards I want to store and I want to store a thousand cards and it'll give you a default design and you can start modifying it from there. Um, I'd like to have one that actually generates some of these buildings for you automatically. So we'll see where we go with it. Um, I'm getting smarter. Uh, Claude's getting smarter. I suspect at some point we'll hit a wall where there'll be things that I want to do that we can't for one reason or another. 
but I think there's a lot of fun and design creativity between here and there. So if you want to join me on this journey, please um, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so you see when I post a new tool what it is, and uh, give a like to the, the video. So now I'll show you using the Living Hinge Designer. I'm going to use my Edge browser so that I don't have all my normal tabs open. And I just put in graylightmay.com. I've been there before, so it's already uh, there for me to select. This is a work in progress, so this is just the current state. I'm going to put pictures of the different tools here in this uh, opening window. There's a button at the top that will take you to my channel. And then uh, this little message that explains the benefits that there's no installation, no account, no ads, just tools to help you make amazing things. And then each one of the tools will have one of these cards when they are posted. There's a short description of what each tool does and there will be a video for each tool. And when this video is completed, it will be plugged into this slot on the Living Hinge Designer. So the number of cards you see here will grow as new tools are added. And then what's true about all of these tools is that they're free. They work anywhere, no, no installation required. All of the work is done on your browser, so it's private. There's always going to be a preview window to show you what you're designing in real time. I will have always tested them, and there will be actual samples, of course, in the video. And what you download is an SVG that's all ready for you to start cutting. At the bottom here, there will be some information about my channel for people who maybe come in from some other way than through my channel. So let's click on the button and open the designer, the Living Hinge designer. And these two fields are you're expected to fill in. You can work in millimeters or you can work in inches. So I'll just leave this at inches for the moment. And it supports two different laser types, uh, CO2 and, and blue diode, and I'll show you in a minute what the implications of changing that is. Here's your preview window, and it has a zoom capability, and there's a download button. The candle shades I've been working with are 11 inches long, and the height of the middle candle is 5 inches, so I'll just use those dimensions because I'm used to them. And you see in the preview window, this has changed and it's not to scale here because it would be too big but it will be in, to scale in the drawing of course so this is at 200 percent zoom and let's change it to 400 percent and it's still fitting in the same size window but you can see that it zooms in so if you want to look at any particular part of the design and in, in more detail you can always zoom in and do that Let's open the advanced settings. There's always defaults here. We'll change this to millimeters because they make more sense in millimeters. And so there's always defaults here. You can change them. Often you won't need to. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can talk about what each of these uh, fields represent. So the cut length is the length of one of these red cuts. The bridge width is the spacing between two of those cuts. And the very important row spacing is the distance between each of these rows. Now let's look at what happens when you change the laser type. Now, a CO2 laser has bigger kerf than the blue diode laser. It doesn't matter that these numbers are exactly right. The only thing that's really happening here is that when you pick CO2, the line gets fatter, so it kind of represents the fact that the kerf is bigger. But the most important thing is that it automatically changes the row spacing from 1.5 millimeters to 1.8. It does that by default based on my experience, but you have the ability to override that to anything you want. And you'll see how it changes in the window, and the number of rows underneath it will change accordingly as well. As the row spacing gets denser, the hinge gets more flexible, but it also gets more fragile, and that's why the defaults are set in the way they're set, but feel free to experiment and see what works best for you. I uh, cut my shades on my diode laser because it has a cleaner 
a cut for these living hinges and it fit in the bed. So I'm going to change this to the blue diode laser settings, 1.5 uh, millimeters per, between rows, and I'm going to download that SVG. It puts that in my download folder. I've been doing testing before shooting this video, and that is version 5 of this particular hinge. I cut mine on the We Create Make It software, but this is light burn. You just look in the downloads folder, you click on the file that you just downloaded, and that's version 5 there. We'll open it. This is what the hinge looks like. If I were cutting this on my CO2 laser with the settings of 20 millimeters per second, this would be done in, what, 19 minutes. Uh, it took about 40 minutes to do it on the WeCreate because it's only doing 7 millimeters per second. Of course, you'd never be just cutting a hinge alone in isolation. It would be part of another drawing. So let me show you another important setting that's available here in Advanced Settings. And that is this edge overhang. A hinge like this is always positioned between two cut edges. So this would be one of the cut edges. This blue boundary you see in the preview window represents the exact size of the hinge you asked for. But you're going to be cutting it on a piece and you want to make sure that those edges go all the way through the edge of the board. You can see it here in my card box I showed you. You want it to go through the edge but not much further because you don't want it to interfere with the rest of the drawing. I used to have to trim these all manually. But now this uh, edge overhang setting sets it automatically for you. The default is one millimeter, and that's just a very slight overhang of the edge. So now if you hit the back button, you come back to the landing page. Let's take a quick look at the candle shade designer. I'm going to be doing a whole separate video on this. In the current version, you set your laser type and your shade dimensions, and then you can pick from these decorative motifs, and then you could just export the file. This is a sample of the blank version where you can add your own motif in your own drawing program. And you can see on the left the connector is already connected. I'll show in the video finishing techniques, including the UV resin that's in the pumpkin, large pumpkin candle in the back. If you're interested in that video or all the future designers I'll be making, please subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and give this video a like.